Hi, this is Louisa at the Pilates Workshop um, and this video is for my clients who have not been able to make it to class this week or join any of the online Zoom training sessions. So if you haven't attended my classes, you're still very welcome obviously to make use of this, but it's not a complete beginner class, so you might want to check out some of the other videos first to go through and some of the basics. So I'll be trying to give a few different options to suit all sorts of abilities and issues and all you need is just to clear some space. If you have a mat, please grab it. If you don't, just find somewhere that's soft and comfortable to lay down, and you might prefer to perhaps pop some towels down. If you do have any Pilates equipment at home, um, an overball might be handy just to pop between your knees and a little bit of sideline work. If not, just a small cushion would do the job if needed, but you, you may not need that at all. Um, and if you have a stretch band, or um, maybe just a stretchy scarf, stretchy scarf, it's perhaps not your favourite one, you could always use that for maybe a hamstring stretch. And perhaps some cushions or a pillow for a little bit of head support, either when we're doing side lying or relaxation position. Now I'm gonna go through things that are probably quite familiar for my clients and hopefully that will just help you in your home practice at this time. So to begin with, we'll come into relaxation position. So you're going to come onto your side, roll onto your back, using a little cushion or maybe a folded towel under your head if you need it. So just take a moment to settle down and set your pelvis in neutral. So just check the hip bones are level with each other as well as the belly button and the pubic bone. The legs are daily parallel and in line with your hip bones. Try and let the ribs soften down, shoulders widen, and neck can lengthen. And ideally, just have a little bit of space for your neck so the pillow is just under your head rather than under your neck. And let's just all start with a few breaths. And if it's comfortable to put your hands on the outer side of your ribs, please do. Otherwise, just let them be where they're comfy for you. So taking a wide breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. So taking a wide breath in through your nose and up through your mouth. So as wide and full of breath as is comfortable for you. So just give yourself a few minutes to settle into this position, to settle into your breathing pattern. And just we'll begin to mobilize your neck, so carry on with your breath. And you can just start to lengthen the back of the neck as you just slightly draw the chin towards your chest but without completely squashing it down and then returning to neutral. So carry on with your breathing. I'm just talking more than focusing on the breathing. So sliding that head up towards the wall behind you. Just for a little bit of length there. You could maybe just use um, your fingertip behind your ear and your thumb towards your collarbone just to check that that distance is as level as can be between both sides. And then return to neutral, which would be where your chin and forehead were level with each other and parallel with the floor. Keeping that length through your neck and just let your head roll to the side a couple of times. A couple of times each way. And as you do that, try to keep your gaze even so you're not sort of starting to drop down as you turn your head. Your gaze is following an arc so we keep it as much length as we can through the neck there. Okay? And then once you're back in the centre with your head, we're going to bring the arms up to your shoulder drop position. So try and keep that width and openness across the chest and the collarbones, fingers and arms long. And you can either do one at a time or both together, it's up to you. But we're going to just inhale, begin to let the arms and shoulders reach up and exhale, softening and releasing back down. So inhale, reach up, and then exhale, releasing down. So try not to let them hunch back up towards your ears as they lower down. Just try and let the shoulders melt back down to the mat. Let them soften down and begin to just feel that movement of the shoulder blades around your ribcage. You can either stay with a few more of these, or you can make a loose fist, stick your thumb out, and we're going to do the same shoulder drop movement, but just begin to spiral the arms as we do so. So as you inhale, you spiral the arms in as you begin to reach up. And then as you exhale, you can unravel and release back down. 
So inhale, spiraling in as you reach, and exhale, unraveling and releasing that. I'm going to do a couple more of those. So try not to turn the arms too far forward. So if the thumbs end up facing towards your knees, you've begun to twiddle around, whizz around with the elbows and the wrists rather than just the shoulder. And then you can let the arms release down, fingertips to your shoulders or your collarbones and circle round a little bit from there. We'll just run through um, a little bit of pelvic stability work and begin to connect to your centre a little bit more. So you may want hands on your hips just to check that the pelvis stays steady and that distance rib to hip is even both sides. Keeping the leg hip width, we'll begin with a few leg slides. So as you breathe out centre, just sliding one leg away, try and keep the hip, knee and ankle aligned without letting your back arch. Inhale, flex the foot, and then exhale, you can release that flex of the foot and slide the leg back in again. So breath and centre, sliding away. Inhale, flex, exhale, release, and then sliding it back in again. So you might just begin to feel you need to connect to that centre the further away the leg goes just to make sure the shape of your back doesn't change. And you can always do a few extra if you want to pause me and um, repeat a few extra ones of these. And then once you've evened up with however many you're doing today, just come back to the center and make sure we're still organized and we'll do some knee drops. So just opening the leg out to the side. So as you breathe out and centre, you can just let one leg open out to the side without tilting from the pelvis, and then we'll inhale to come back again. The other leg that is an opening stays up to the ceiling. So breath and centre as you begin to open, and inhale to come back from there. So breath and centre as you begin to open, and inhale to come back from there. You could stay relaxed, or if you wanted to, you could bring the arms up and just slightly soften the elbows so you're in like a hug shape. And you could open out the opposite arm to opposite leg. You'll need to connect to your centre a little bit more to keep that stability. So breath and centre, the left arm and right leg open out. And then we'll inhale, gather back in again. So breath and centre, right arm, left leg open. And then inhale to gather back in again. We'll just do a couple more of those. And then we'll come back in from there. Okay, so that we'll next just begin to mobilise the hips a little bit more. So we're going to bring one leg into a really loose knee fold and just do some hip mobility. So breath and centre. It's going to float one leg up. Try to have the knee over the hip. Let the shin just dangle down towards the floor. If it's comfortable for your back to slide the other leg away, please do. If that makes your back arch or feel uncomfortable, keep it in your relaxation position. So just breathing, scooping. We do about five stirs of that thigh in the hip socket in each direction. Don't go too massive, just beginning to mobilise the hips a little bit. Reverse. And then once you've done an even number each side, you can come back to the centre, slide that leg in, and then switching over. So I'm sliding the leg away first, if that was appropriate for you, otherwise leave it bent. Floating the leg up, knee over the hip, shin released, keep breathing, scooping, and as you just begin to stir and mobilise that hip joint. So up to about five each way would be lovely. And then you can come back to relaxation position, lowering that leg and sliding this one back in again. So I'm going to show you a few options for your hamstring stretch. So if you have got a stretchy band at home or a stretchy long enough scarf, you can use that for your hamstring stretch. If you haven't, I'll show you an alternative. So the next ones, you don't necessarily have to do both hamstring stretches. You could pick one that's most appropriate for you. So we're still going to come back to that relaxation position. I'll just readjust and settle back down. So strong centre, I'm going to bring one leg into single knee fold, unravel the band and just try and hook it over the arch of your foot. So elbows on the floor, forearms up, and then just lengthening that leg away 
without disturbing the pelvis. So your foot will probably already be in a slightly flexed position. If it's comfortable for you, you could flex it a little bit more, but try not to overly curl the toes. I'm trying to keep the foot fairly flat. So keeping that neutral shape, once the back of the leg begins to lengthen out, you might begin to let it rise up a little bit, but try not to let it come so far that the tailbone lifts away from the floor. As with the previous exercise, if you want to, you can slide the other leg away, but absolutely fine to keep it bent if that's more comfortable for your back. So just taking a few breaths into there so that let that lengthen and release. And if you come to my classes, you know, we often try to do the we'll spiral the leg in and out from the hips, or just on the slight turn out for a breath or two, back to neutral, and then I'm turned in without hitching up for a breath or two. You may also want to do the leg opening out to the side again without tilting the pelvis and possibly changing um, hands with the band if you need to. And then coming back to the centre, maybe it nudges across and sometimes we do a little bit of turn out for that. It might be easier if the other leg is lengthened away for that one. So that's the hamstring stretch for the first leg. So let's do the other side and then I'll show you the alternative version. So you're in knee fold, elbows on the floor, knee probably roughly over your hip to start with, lengthen that leg away. So start off with the thighs pretty much in parallel. Try to keep that leg in line with the hip, you can flex the foot, but with trying not to curl the toes, and just a few breaths into there. So just see where you can get to without compromising that position of your neutral spine and pelvis. So just a few breaths into there. Once it's begun to lengthen and release, you might want to add on that you just do the spiral of the leg out from the hip, so you just get slightly different stretch without tilting the pelvis or hitting up the hip. Spiral back to parallel and then you could spiral inwards from the hip, still keeping that length through the waist. And then back to the centre and then you could open out to the side and then come back to the midline, maybe going across the other leg, possibly with a slight turnout and then coming back. So if you don't have a band, it doesn't matter. Um, the other option that you might want to do is climb a tree prep for your hamstring stretch. If, like me, your arms are quite short, it might help to prop yourself up a little bit more, so I'm just grabbing my extra cushion, to help you reach the leg, as long as that's okay with your neck, but without compromising this neutral spinal position. So I'll just do a few of the climb a tree prep as a reminder for you, that you float that leg up, you interlock the hands are on the back of the middle of the thigh. So the knees are in, um, is in line with my hip. I'm trying not to lose neutral, which is not quite hard for me to reach. So I'll inhale, then I hug that leg in towards me as far as I can without losing neutral. And then exhale, extending that leg, pressing it up and away into my hands. So inhale, hugging that leg in. And then exhale, extending it away into my hands. So as I've already done, the other hamstring stretch. I'm only going to do about five of these. But if you didn't do the previous hamstring stretch with the band, you might want to spend a little bit longer doing these. And then your final one, leave the leg length that if you can, even if you need to loosen the hands, and you could still just do pointed flex from the ankle about four or five times. Okay, and then you can bend that leg and go on to the other side. So I'm going to interlock the hands on the back of the middle of the thigh, knee roughly over the hip, shin is pretty much parallel with the floor, just slightly lower. Try to stay neutral and the hands are as close to sort of the middle of the back of the thigh, the belly of the muscle as you can get to. So you inhale, hug that leg in towards you, exhale, extend that leg, lengthening it up towards the ceiling, pressing it away into your hands. So you inhale as you draw in, exhale, lengthen it away. So with this one, we're not really holding it until the last one, you're keeping it moving. So we're just doing around five. And then on your final one, you could loosen the hands and then just flex and point a few times, trying to soften the toes a little bit more there. Good, and then you can bend that leg in, lowering it down and get rid of the larger cushion if you added it a moment ago. And for the next part, and we're going to just go into our spine curls or our bridge. So if you do have a ball that's sometimes useful to pop between the knees, or you could use your big cushion, you might want to grab that now. And depending on um, your neck and the neck alignment, you may not need any head support as you come up into your spine curls. 
If you have osteoporosis or low back pain, you may prefer to do the bridge in one piece rather than that articulated version of the spine curl. So I'll go through both and then you can um, pick the one that's best for you. Okay, so with or without something between the knees and I'm going to just shuffle off of my cushion for this one. So I'm still neutral, but when you do your spine curl or your bridge, your feet might need to come a little bit closer towards your bottom. But I'm not squeezing the ball really tightly, it's just to keep a little bit of connection and through the inner thighs and to help with my stability. So arms can be down by your side, but keeping width and openness across the chest and the collarbone and keeping length through the neck. So spine curl first of all, but as you breathe out and centre, you go into that little pelvic tilt and begin to peel and wheel your spine at one vertebrae at a time. Breath at the top. And as you breathe out, lengthening, releasing, peeling and releasing all the way back down. So I'll do one more of those to show you. So as you breathe out, centre, you're going to go into that pelvic tilt and try to articulate through each vertebrae of the spine until you're back up to neutral again. Breath at the top. And as you breathe out, lengthening, peeling and releasing all the way back down. So if the articulated version is inappropriate and you normally do a bridge in class with me, please do a bridge for your home practice now. So it's the same movement but without the articulation to get there. So you lift in one piece, so breath and centre, you're going to lift up in one piece, breath to stay and then as you breathe out you're going to lower, softening in the hips at one piece. So the bridge is that you're floating up and then softening, floating back down in one piece. So stick with either the bridge or either the spine curl. If you wanted to, we could add on your ribcage closure. The ribcage closure is either the palms face away from you or any shoulder issues that you may prefer to have them palms facing inwards. That's the way I'm going to have mine today. So you can take your breath in, either bridge or spine curl up. And then when you get to the top, we're going to inhale, float the arms back. Exhale, leave the arms and either bridge or spine curl all the way back down to neutral. And then once your tailbone has landed, your arms can come back again on that inhale. So breath and centre, spine curl or bridge up. Inhale at the top and then exhale, peeling, releasing or floating the spine back down. And then inhale, arms can come back again. I'm just going to do one more of those with you. Do a spine curl up, floating the arms, leaving the arms as you soften and release the spine back down and then the arms can come back again. And if you took your head cushion away, you might just pop it back for a moment. So um, some of you are going to move on to do curl ups. If you normally come to my Monday or Friday 10.30 class, we don't tend to do curl ups and I can discuss that with you another time. Um, so please just skip that part um, and if you don't want to do curl ups in class as well please just, just skip that exercise so if you aren't joining in with the curl ups I suggest you perhaps do some single knee folds instead so breath and centre and you're going to float one leg up inhale to stay exhale to lower so just making sure you've got enough connection and stability to your centre if curl ups are okay we're going to move on to that now so Probably won't need a cushion behind your head once we interlock the hands and bring the hands behind your head. So I'm just trying to lengthen my spine as much as possible. Elbows, shoulders soft and my head is all cradled in my hands. So first off I'm going to just do my chin tuck as I inhale and then exhale. My ribs lie down towards my tummy. I try to remain in neutral as I come up to my curl up. Breath there to stay. And you breathe out, we're lengthening and releasing all the way back down again. So we inhale, chin tuck, and exhale, gliding up, breath at the top. And as you breathe out, lengthening and releasing back down again. So chin tuck, gliding up, and then lengthening and releasing back down. If you wanted to, you could begin to reach one arm away, bringing it back, reach the other away, bringing it back, and then lowering down, potentially reaching both arms away. So you can inhale, chin tuck, exhale, glide, reach one, maybe both, 
they lifted, still breathing as they come back, and then you can lengthen and release back down. So you choose where you're at today. And I'm going to come back from there and just pop in the cushion back for a moment. Again, if you tend to come to my Monday or Friday 10.30 class, there's going to be a different option. So some of you will do obliques and some of you will do um, oblique rolls. So the oblique rolls option is we're going to keep the pelvis steady. Just interlock the hands above your breastbone so you've made that sort of hug or arc shape. Try to keep the hands in line with your breastbone, but you're just going to rotate that upper body keeping the pelvis anchored to the mat. So as you breathe out and centre, you're going to let ribs, head, the neck roll over to one side. So one shoulder is lifting, and then inhale, come back to the centre. So exhale, centre, ribs, head, the neck. It's really not very far at all. And then inhale to come back again. It's like a lying down waist twist. So breath and centre, over you go. And then inhale to come back. Exhale, centre, over you go, and then inhale to come back. And if the curl-ups and the big curl-ups are okay, you can come back into that curl-up position. And then you inhale, chin tuck, exhale, glide into that curl-up. Breath there, keep scoops, and then add your rotation towards the opposite way. Back to the centre, try and keep that pelvis steady. Stay lifted if you can as you go over to the other side. So at this point, the ball might be helpful to keep the pelvis steady, um, but if you don't have one, you could use a cushion or you don't need to use anything at all. So you're curling up on the centre, rotate, try not to lose height or curl onto your neck, and then other side. And just do one more. So curl, rotate, back to centre, keep the height of the curl, and then over you go and releasing back down. I'm going to remove the ball once I've landed and then we're just going to come into some hip rolls. So definitely bring any head support back that you need. So hip rolls, first option is you keep the legs and feet glued together, arms in a low V, palms up, keeping that connection of the shoulder blades to the mat. So as you breathe out and centre, let the pelvis and legs peel over to one side. Head could turn the opposite way or just stay centred. Breathe into there, and as you breathe out, coming back from your midline, as the head and the legs come back into the middle. So breath and centre, pelvis and legs one way, breath in there, and as you breathe out, gliding back again. So using that breath, but still keeping that connection, so you get that lovely rotation to your low back, and then maybe the upper back if you're adding the head as well. If you wanted to, you could just separate the legs a little bit wider than hip width apart, so they're slightly turned out. Before you sort of get the pelvis involved again, just see if you can let the legs roll to one side, knee rolls back to the centre, like wipers, and then maybe you could add that movement onto your hip roll. So breath and centre, pelvis and legs over to one way, and then inhale to come back, and then exhale over to the other side. Whichever version feels comfortable for you. And then once you've evened up, you're going to come back to the midline and just roll onto your side to come up to sitting. And I'm going to pause at this point and then we're going to do another little section of this week's class.